everybody. Welcome to Ask the Anabolic Doc, starring Dr. Thomas O'Connor, brought to you by his websites, metabolicdoc.com and anabolicdoc.com. Dr. Thomas is the author of America on Steroids, A Time to Heal. You can get that at either one of those websites or on Amazon.com. Joining us all the way from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Dr. Thomas O'Connor. What's up? How you doing, Ron? Doing well. It's, I tell you, we got Florida weather right here in Boston. I don't need to, I don't need to go to Florida. It's hot down here, but the, 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 the outside and the beach out here in the back, yeah. poolside or on the beach, 83 degrees in the ocean. Okay. Wow. The, is the water that hot? 83 water temperature. Oh, my goodness. That's like a bath. <laughs> bath water. Well, that's good because, you know, I don't know how Connecticut is, but if we go to the beaches uh, in Cape Cod, and especially if you head up toward, like, New Hampshire, Hampton Beach, it's freezing even in, like, yeah. It starts getting a little warmer by Labor Day, and then it's too late. Now you got to stop yeah. on the beach. Never, never that bad. But you, you got the wetsuits and stuff, and it's it is. But that's why it's the Northeast. We love it. Right. We appreciate it a lot more than I'm sure these Florida people have no appreciation for that. <laughs> they have it all the year round. So, uh, you just did a video last week on a classic, classic drug. It's not a steroid. It's it's used mainly between steroid cycles. Clomiphene, also known as Clomid, uh, one of the few estrogen blockers I've ever used in my life. Um, so, uh, like I said, I, I always have to point out to people, if you want the really scientific breakdown, the mechanisms and the chemistry, go to Dr. O'Connor's channel called Anabolic Doc on YouTube. Anabolic Doc, it's, you know, it's got uh, the references and it's got a table of content. It's good stuff. I usually skip around and my, my brain's a little flightier than Dr. Tom's. So, you gave the history. This was developed in the 1950s, 1956, and it began uh, trials, pharmaceutical trials in the early 60s for women with ovulation issues to help them conceive, I guess. Uh, and in the mid-60s, they started, started looking at it for male infertility as well, which is kind of odd that the same drug would work for men and women. Well, maybe it's not odd. I don't know. Um, so, for men, it was found to increase LH and luteinizing hormone and FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, increased sperm count, uh, and it became very quickly the most commonly prescribed infertility drug in the world. Yeah. So it's is a, it's it was used all over the world by by mainly by women hoping to get pregnant. Yeah. Okay. When did it start? Do you know if it's when did it start becoming more commonly used by men? In the last. It's always been used when you talk to fertility urology doctors in the world and in America is my experience more that they've been using this for infertility with men for 20 or 30 years commonly in the last 10 years it's been used you know more for TRT for men so that's you know we could talk about that oh, but yeah, th this drug and it's a get to comment on your comment that obviously you, you said that it's interesting that it increases men so Let's talk about the basic physiology of people and fertility. So the central nervous system, the, the brain, hypothalamus, and the pituitary, it runs the, the gonads for men and women. It's the exact same analog. Okay. So the luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, these gonadotropins, Ron, they come out of the anterior pituitary of men and women. Hmm. So there's no your your brain runs the thyroid, your adrenals, and your gonads for both men and women. So are you saying men and women are actually the same species of organism? So it, it, it's kind of hard to believe, Ron. I don't, I don't think I'm not, not buying it at all because we're definitely not the same species. That's why I'm a testosteronologist. That's right. <laughs> so uh, you also pointed out is a classic SERM. You throw that term around all the time. You know, meatheads yeah. they know about SARMs because they're trying. <laughs> You know, I was in Canada, and they were selling it at the expo there in Toronto. Wow. I'm thinking, I don't even know if I could bring this back with me if I wanted to. If they, That's great. If they're going to look at me and go, check his luggage, cavity search, which they didn't, but, you know, had the Cavity search. But, Ron, so the deal is, but, bro, this is, Ron, this is bro science at its best. Hmm. Because any bro scientist knows about the anti-estrogens, and that's why I'm, I'm doing, a, 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 you know, a report, and it's just part one is going to be this drug, Part two will be the other ones, and including aromatized inhibitors. We have some time to go on this. You know, it's going to be fun. Yeah, you know, because every time you do one of these drug profile videos, 
90% of the comments are saying, Doc, you got to do one on this and that. No, it's really cool, though. I and mean, you see the comments in this, Ron, are absolutely off the hook. Unbelievable. Great, great response. Okay, so medical uses of, of Clomid, female infertility. Uh, and you pointed out that it only really works for men for that purpose if the failure is in the hypothalamus or the pituitary, not if it's in the actual gonads themselves. Good. So let's talk about that because this is a show of real science and bro science. Yeah. So it, 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 when you look at a man structurally, if when he has a failure of fertility, not to mention low testosterone, here's how we diagnose it. it it's either it, it, it starts one, two, three. The primary failure, if it's it's not, you think it would be one, two, three, starting from the top to the bottom. Right. It's the reverse. Hmm. When the testicles fail, that's called primary testicular failure because the testicles are the primary site. Hmm. Right. They make testosterone in sperm. Correct. Yes. Isn't that interesting? So it's not one, two, three from the top. It's one, two, three. And when I was in med school, I remember doing endocrinology. It was always kind of I had to get my head around that. So primary failure of a testicle and those those conditions that cause that and it's quite rare hmm. that 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 if that's the problem it's not going to work hmm. be, because this is going to be an anti an anti estrogen blocker in the brain it's amazing that it works this way it's going to tell your brain to increase LH and FSH from your brain from your pituitary yeah. if so that that's going to happen but if you don't, ha if the stimulation, so the stimulation happens in the testicles, yeah. Leydig and Soratelli cells. This is good bro science. Mm -hmm. It's actually real science. Yeah, but every science. guy, every guy who knows that HPTA axis, this is great stuff. Seems like every bro science guy, he starts off, they they learn this, and they they come into me, and they're really confident, and I'm very impressed because they know more than the average doctor does on this stuff. Yeah. But Every endocrinology doctor and experts that are involved in this, fertility, urology guys, they know this stuff. So this is going to be, it's, so it's true. And when I was, re, again, re, doing my review and my presentation for the video, I spent a few hours because I've, I've already experienced this stuff for years and you know thousands of patients. And I'm ready to go with what I've learned from my clinical. But then I always brush up on the, path, you know, the, the pathophysiology and the real biology, I have to do my textbook because I never want to get slammed. Right. So when I was doing my research, it, it was very interesting. I, I, I read for a few hours, you know, with urology, endocrinology. I read across the whole world. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of always reading on the stuff anyway. I, you know, some new literature, some new data, new studies. And I came across, it was very interesting. It was just so simple that it was one of the, one of the most recent reviews from on up to date which is really the top of the world, you know, it's called up-to-date research. Hmm. And it's endocrinology and urology. They, they said, you know, bold letters, this will not work if the testicles are in failure. Hmm. Wow, I have to put that, how amazing is that? So when you look at anabolic steroid failure, it's not the balls, but it's part of the balls. There's a, it's a, it's a hypogonadotropic hypogonadism and I know I'm throwing the big stuff around because you're a smart guy and these my my fans my followers these are smart guys yeah. so it's 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 something happens in the brain because we're going to relate this to steroid users yeah. right right so something happens in the brain from steroid use and the brain goes to sleep and it doesn't wake up hmm. but when you give FSH and even Clomid and tamoxifen in these drugs and there's not many drugs we use. We don't have many drugs. We don't have many, any, any, many tools in the bag. Right. It, it does work, but it, but it, but it's amazing that. And we're gonna. I'm sure you're gonna ask these questions, so I'll. Do, I should just be quiet. It's, 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 a, it's a, It doesn't work well for the brain of a man who's used steroids. But again, it does. The balls have to still be functional. There has to be some salvation of the balls. Okay. Because that's what, what I was getting to that next is because it is used for TRT and you use it in a lot of your patients for, as a standalone agent for TRT rather than rather than giving them testosterone shots or something. They're just taking yeah. a, a Clomid every day. But yeah. that would not work for someone who's used steroids, unfortunately. This is this is probably the most amazing broology piece that there is in the world. The fact that I discovered among other experts and a lot of broologists and a lot of patients, unfortunately, mm. that when you give 
Clomid to a man who's been prior exposed to androgens, oh, his testosterone and semen will probably go up on paper. But he feels horrible, mm. thrashing. And now I'm going to get, look at the comments. Look at the comments. Yeah. Can't argue the comments. Doc is right. Boom, 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 boom. And there's a couple guys in there saying, I did it and I felt okay. Now, those are probably not guys that have been m- massive. You know, guys, look, I almost said guys like you, Ron, but I know you don't. It's okay. You I know, I, I, Ron, I, don't, I know you don't mind that. I don't. You, giving you Clomid with 20 years of steroid exposure in your brain that would be that would be so unethical now doctors don't know that mm. they don't know that's why we're doing research and it would, it would do jack shit for me you know it, well, you would feel like crap and i and unfortunately ron i've seen some horrible tragedies because guys try it themselves or they go to a doctor and the doctor says okay I'm going to feel comfortable doing this. Here's Clomid. It's like, okay, great. That's great. You're thinking about something. And now that's why we have to do the research and teach these doctors. And again, it could work, yeah. but I would. N- I learned over the in the streets in the last 10 years or more, I did Clomid for guys and they were like, doc, oh my God, please. I can't take it. Okay. And they're not saying it to me because they're trying to rip me off or get steroids, wink, wink. They, they're, they're coming to me because they, they're, they don't want to take steroids in the streets anymore. They want to try to be recovered and they want to maybe be fertile. And so using Clomid as a sole agent, wow, I couldn't believe how incredibly across the board it was a no-no. Yeah, because I mean, so I, anecdotally, you know, most bodybuilders use it for PCT purposes. Correct. That's that's the only reason I ever use it. I'd probably like. But they don't use it alone, Ron, and they don't even do. No one even does PCT anymore. No, but when I did, that's all I did was 50 milligrams of clomid a day. Wow. How'd you? I was told you I was too lazy to get the. I got the HCG and I was such a moron. I mixed it all up and I did like one shot. It was supposed to last me. I don't know. I'm horrible with math. How did I feel? Uh, Definitely made me weepy and emotional. Uh, See that? Like a depressed, sad, you know. Every song on the radio made me cry. I was like, oh. But, you know, luckily I wasn't on it for that long. But that's the most common complaint I hear from other guys who use it for uh, PCT purposes. This is the emotional, the depression, the sadness. It's, it's, isn't, it, isn't that incredible to me that it's so widespread, the anecdotal response is so widespread on this use of Clomid? Well, you know, thousands and thousands of guys use a drug. They're, all, they're bound to share their experiences with each other, especially now with an internet. This was back when I was doing it. it was, there barely was an internet. It was just sort of dawning. But uh, we still, we would talk to each other at the gym. Uh, so, yeah, it works. Uh, it's used for TRT. Uh, it's used mainly these days in bodybuilding world. It's used for PCT, but yeah. typ- typically not alone. It's used with H, along Correct. with HCG, along with tamoxifen, a.k.a. Nolvidex. Uh, it's those, three, those three drugs are classically stacked together these days for PCT. Uh, you know, I know you're not going to give recommendations because disclaimer, disclaimer, but is, does that make sense physiologically, chemically to use those it, three together? It does, though. It, it, it does, Ron. And we're, we're, we're finally about to do some real studies where we're going to take men in that are currently on steroids and we're going to randomize and double blind them to real PCT. Hmm. Wow. So we're going to and we're going to do we're going to do. The, you know, I call the Dr. Scally because I, I pay respect to him. Mm. That Dr. Michael Scally was really the first doctor in the world in America to, you know, to, to put himself on the line and to try to help recover men. I, I mean, I know Mike, Dr. Scally. I mean, he, I think he went overboard mm. and unfortunately he lost his license in the state of Texas, removed him. They took his license from him. Mm. And, but he and, and Bill Llewellyn, you know, these are the guys, this goes way back in history, right? Yeah. 15 years ago, where that's that, that's that, that rec- that's that, that regimen. And it's very simple. Starts with HCG, overlaps with tamoxifen, overlaps with Clomid, Clomid short, tamoxifen's long, and you step down the doses. And I've talked to thousands and thousands of men that have done it. And there's been a variable response, Ron. Hmm. So we finally, ha- it's complete dungeon bro science. It's insane. So we have to see 
for a man who's on testosterone and steroids inappropriately, you know, taking steroids, he's a young man, he has testosterone was normal, he starts androgens because he's doing it for muscle building and who cares, and then he, he comes to a physician and he says, please help me, I, I want to stop, and you can't just tell the guy, get the F out of the office. <laughs> we, we, I know you're laughing. I mean, no, we, they do. They, people are tell, doctors do tell guys that all the time. Not, but not, Ron, it's changing, man. Not with me around. Okay. Not with me. Business is good, man. Guys are coming in. Doctors are calling. I'm overloaded in a good way. Good way. Every, I'm always here. I'm always rolling. I'm always taking guys. We're expanding the business now with other doctors. I'm obviously very happy. And doctors are just say no and just tell someone to get the hell out of the office and stuff it, it, no it, it's it, it's over for them doctors are helping now ron so i had a question about that because you know you you pointed out in your video that clomid in pct is typically only used for a very limited time typically 30 days four weeks whatever because it'll eventually raise your estrogen uh, you know, Correct. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not amazing so, that Clomid raises estrogen systemically. So my question is, the guys that you have using Clomid as a standalone agent for TRT purposes, do they not, do they not pose that same risk? No, Ron, again, the guys that, that are on Clomid by itself, hmm. the, it's, a veil, it's, a, it's a variable response to estradiol levels on paper. But when you see it go up on paper, which means on the lab, and you go, how do you feel? And they say, I don't know, I feel good. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we don't, now again, this is variable. Most men, you do see the Clomid increasing it, you do. Hmm. Now, we don't, is that steroid users? These are not steroid users. So. We, it's all over the board. So you could use a little aromatase, you could use a little Clomid with a little, little baby dose of aromatase inhibitor, voila. Hmm. So, but again, I'm, you know I'm not a fan of leaving guys on these medicines with prolonged periods because you're, you're, they're, it's not gonna be good for them for long periods. So you can't do that to a man. And look at the so symptoms. I'm sure you're going to ask the question about the eyes. That's the scariest thing ever. Because uh, when we interviewed that that young guy, the college athlete, uh, a few months ago, I can't. It was primarily Clomid that he was attributing his vision loss to, wasn't and it? And SARMs, correct. And then we got. And remember that. Remember that it was it was coming. Remember he did. If I'm correct, if I if I'm remembering it right, didn't he come off of SARMs, hmm. and then did he did PCT? So and my question is, that's why I'm doing research. If you're on a SARM, why would you need PCT from a SARM? Well, it's supposed to be selective engine reset. <laughs> Come on, Ron. We got to have fun. It's got to be fun. We got to have fun with our show. So, people, you know, obviously, we, we, it's not documented. There's no studies. There's no evidence that SARMs plus Clomid equals blindness. You know, that's true. But true. People have reported anecdotally a lot of Clomid users. It's true. Not full on blindness, thank God. I mean, that's horrible, but. Blurry vision, uh, flash, yep. flashes, uh, and I assume that that resolves itself after they cease the Clomid use. Ron, look at the comments on my site. These guys are not bullshitting. Mm. It, 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 that you, you, there's how many comments? I don't know. There's like 20, there's, 30. Yeah. But, but, but there's probably four or five comments from different men that said, I had that blurry vision. Yeah. Now, what, do you know why? That, what, what is it about Clomid that would affect your right. retinas? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's let's talk about that. I I've never, I've never called an ophthalmologist on this. Here's what I think is happening. I think it's true. I think it's dose dependent. Mm. I think it's man dependent. You know, like anything else. You know, there's a there's a cross section of response that men are going to have because people have different genetics and fingerprints and it's molecular. Mm. So, so if you take more and more and more of the stuff, like 25 or 50 milligrams probably not going to happen I don't but if you're cranking up a hundred milligrams or maybe more and you're on it for long enough and you're susceptible to it so it's gonna happen now what it, it's probably Ron it's affecting this medicine is working in the central nervous system in the central nervous system there's there's an op there's, there's 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 a nerve there's an ophthalmic artery excuse me ophthalmic nerve yeah. it's it's a cranial nerve I'm not a neurologist but I don't have to be so it's it, it's and then you're you're monkeying with 
central nervous system and you're monkeying with receptors with 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 estrogen and androgen so it's affecting that then you have the retina right there's a retinal you know there's there's arteries that are very sensitive in the retina mm -hmm. there's no question that and if you look for guys with the SARMs and the overlap and even it, it, it's got to affect in the nervous it's a neurologic issue in the retina and the nerve that services and re relates to the back of the eye and there's also estrogen and androgen receptors involved I mean this is this is relevant because SARMs are they're still so widely used uh, I think when the government tried to shut them down all that did was get get guys more excited about getting a hold of SARMs I mean I hear more and more people using them now than I did me too two three years ago for sure when the government didn't even seem to notice they were around so I mean this is relevant because we're gonna have a lot of guys mixing those two agents so yeah so yeah I guess I guess be careful if your vision starts to show any sign if you're seeing blurriness or whatever I would cease one or both of them I, I don't know what to do I mean I, I've, I've had you know I, I'm taking in a few new patients a day and I'm still I'm still going strong hmm. so and the young guys Ron yeah Oh, on SARMs. Wow. Everyone's on SARMs because you know what? I, I talked to an actor a few weeks ago and he said, Doc, you know, these, these are called dry. We got to stay dry, Doc. And I go, what are you talking about staying dry? Ron, I got to share this. It's really cool. He goes, Doc, you know, we're staying dry these days. I go, what are you talking? I'm, I'm getting in the pool in a few hours here. Yeah. He goes, no, Doc, we don't do estrogenic steroids. No one does that anymore. Oh, wow. So they're all loading up on SARMs. So it's because we can't be puffy. We can't be puff. And I said, whoa. So now this guy happened after about 18 months of SARMs. Mm -hmm. His testosterone levels were 25. Wow. Yeah. So they're not as. So, so much for the SARMs. Yeah, they're not all they were cracked up to be, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, they're not selective right. androgen. Liver, uh, you didn't. Very minimal risk. It didn't seem like there was anything to it as nothing, far as liver Nothing. Side nothing in the liver. Deep DVT, deep vein thrombosis, blood clots yeah. in the lower legs. How often have you seen that? Right, so I've seen it because now remember, so there's a selection bias in my practice, right? Right. Love because it. guys are coming into me with a lot, they're on other agents too, right? So steroids and hormones, Ron, definitely affect the hypercoagulable state. Mm. So women, you know, that are on, that are on, birth control pills and estrogens and progestins for HRT. Yeah. I mean there's 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 no question that it's a risk for for DVTs and hyper poor women. I feel bad for that's why I don't deal with women. They're too complicated. <laughs> I men are much more I mean I'm not kidding. Yeah. I'm, I'm I mean I'm I'm really an ex primary care doctor so I I really women are complicated. When they take even birth control pills. I've seen pulmonary embolisms, DVTs, strokes, heart attacks, gallbladder disease. Wow. Right? So, Jeez. I don't, I, it's, and no one's going to argue it. And yeah. there's, there's, I think it was called the Women's Health Initiative out of Harvard like 15 years ago where they looked at those, you know, the data for women on HRT. And, you know, uh, they had all these conclusive issues where, um, you know, risks and heart, I, I don't deal with women on on, on, on on hormones. I deal only with men on hormones. Right. So it, it's there's no question that I've had many men on testosterone, not to mention steroids, have deep venous blood clots in their legs. I a guy today, yesterday, mm. he had blood clots in his arms mm. and he's on TRT. But but he had he had he has some other conditions. He he has other hypercoagulable states that I'm dealing with right now that, that, that I'm trying to tease out what this is what I do as a testosteronologist I'm trying to tease out you know what what's the underlying medical condition but is a steroid use or testosterone exacerbating it so there's no question that 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 there's a hormonal effect Ron and and it's true if you look for these ser these serms yeah. that there's a warning on them for DVTs Ron this these have been used Ron these have been used for decades yeah I mean we're going on 60 years of them it looks like or so, so that range. I don't so again for guys living on Clomid 
for TRT, which I have, a, I have, a, I have a bunch of guys on that I manage closely on just TRT, yeah. and and for for Clomid, and then guys that have used it in PCP, PCT. If a guy's throwing a clot in his leg or up to his up to his lungs, it's called a pulmonary embolism. If he makes it because he comes to me and he's still alive, he's like, you know, doc, let me. I got a PE. I'm in here now. I want a DVT, and I'm in. I got two of them. I got boom, boom. Uh, here's my history. It's so complicated, and it's you know, the he's like, doc, it's from Clomid. I'm like, well, well, what? I was coming off of all these drugs. I mean, you can't say it's from Clomid because you were just coming off of a gram of test. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's when when you're on eight, ten different drugs, it's pretty hard to pinpoint which one's that, causing that, issues. That's why we need to do research, legitimate research, and try to identify how these things are really working and affecting the body. Final uh, side effect: gynecomastia, and test rare cases testicular tumors. Thank God, because nobody wants those. Ugh. <laughs> it doesn't happen. I put it in there because when I did my research. I found out that those were legitimate concerns when you look at the black box, when the warnings, yeah. and I was like, that's interesting, mm. but I've never seen it, but I had to report it, because you do have super physiologic estradiol levels, mm. and if you have that with any agent, you're going to get gynecomastia. I mean, but but you we, know, that's, that's, I mean, that's a good reason why most guys stack it with the Novodex. While they're because correct that, that's gonna I, that's gonna counter affect that to most degree, bro science one hundred and one absolutely yeah, but you know there's an interesting I, we're not gonna do a whole show on gyno but Greg Valentino had a very interesting theory about gyno because uh, he he's got tiny nipples as do I and I never used any estro, any anti estrogens anything like that during my cycles wow for many many years in fact the only only one contest prep cycle maybe two did I use like a, a Rumidex. The other wow. times, nothing. I was like, ah, I don't need that. I never got gyno, never. Wow. So maybe there is something to it with tiny nipples. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. My guy, my, my boy Greg. So yeah. Greg says that it makes sense though, mm -hmm. though with the big, the guys with those big areolas, the big nip. Does that mean they have a larger gland? I have, that's a good question actually. I like Greg. I like Greg. That's very impressive, Greg. Yeah, see, Greg. I mean, I think that might act, that that theory might actually have some stuff behind it. that. Because I mean, I, I have to think. You know, I checked. I took in two new patients today, and one guy had really, really hard masses. Now, he's, these guys were all on testosterone for years, right? Yeah. You know, on and off gear and everything. And this guy's like, Doc, wait till you wait till you do your exam on me. <laughs> And I was like, well, okay, let's, let's, we did our thing and then went in the exam room. I laid him down, pulled the shirt up, and I was, that was very, it's impressive, man. Hmm. So, so uh, he's going to go to a surgeon. It was like a softball? How big was it? No, no, no. Golf a little, ball? little, little ping pong balls. Ping you know, oh, okay, ping well, that's pretty sizable. Well, but, but small, little baby pink, little baby. No, we don't give these to babies. <laughs> no, I've, baby. seen, I've seen some nasty gyno. I've seen some horrific gyno. I mean, so... And I and the guy has you know the guy is uh, he's I don't, I don't want to give away I mean he's in his fifties and he's he's like Doc I'm ready to surrender to you and he's like we're not going to live on a Romanese inhibitors Doc right I go sir look at your did, it didn't even help because he's got you know hard gyno yeah. and I'm praying to God that I've never seen a breast cancer but they're, it's freely movable it's very hard but it's movable yeah. so it's not like a, a lesion that you'd worry that breast cancer in. God knows it looks like steroids, if anything, prevent and protect against breast cancer. That's a whole other show. So um, heart, with, with men, it's heart disease and prostate disease and hair loss and all the, all the mental stuff. But it, for this, he's going to go to a surgeon and just have them removed so we don't have to play the game of using aromatase inhibitors. Forget, no one's using Clomid, no. but some guys use tamoxifen. And I do use little baby doses, not for babies, of tamoxifen, I let patients use little small doses. They're on TRT. They may or may not have used steroids. They're on TRT, and for the blocking the the effect of the sensational effect, sensational effect, not the real hard masses. But guys will use. I'll use a ten to twelve to two week period of some tamoxifen to block down the effect of TRT with, 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 with gyno, 
but it's sensational. Sensational gyno is where they feel it, yeah. but you really don't have, it's kind of burning and annoying, and it wipes it out, and then I, I can reset these guys. I want to share that because it's so, but it's, again, and tamoxifen for a short run for guys, if I feel they're stable and they're safe from the cardiovascular perspective, yeah. I, I, I don't mind doing it, but, I, but they're not going to live on it. The, these anti-aging guys, Everyone's walking out with test, HCG, to, uh, Romanase inhibitors, Clomid. It's it, it just, it, it's, an, it, it's an idiot that does this. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. And they just, they leave them on it forever. Yeah, well, yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> Doc, I saved the best question I have about Clomid for last. Let's go. You can bet this has something to do with pornography. <laughs> so the legend has always been, uh, I've been heard, I've been hearing for years that Porn actors use Clomid specifically to increase semen volume so they can shoot these <laughs> massive loads. Yeah, everyone's laughing. But <laughs> Wait, what? So, we got the whole crew in the back here laughing. <laughs> well, anything, I'm glad glad I can get, get a I chuckle. got nurses back here laughing at this, Ron. But is there any, you know, it's it's documented to increase sperm count. Have you, in any of your readings, come across anything to suggest that the actual no. volume of the semen is increased? None. It's None. None. It doesn't work that way at all. It works for eight, and guys are going to argue. You're wrong. You're wrong. It's HCG. Mm. HCG is pretty crazy. Okay. So that will, so if you're a guy and you want to pretend you're a porn star, you want to get yeah. some HCG. Okay. Not Col Colman won't do it. No. Nope. <laughs> but, but Ron, that's not, that Jer, what's the guy's name? Jer, what's the guy? Hold on. What's Ron, Ron Jeremy? Ron Jeremy, I had to ask uh, that. He's, ask not, that. he's not famous for that. You're thinking Peter North was famous for the volume. Okay, listen, yeah. but that, but that, that's HCG, and this, and and you know what it is? That's I, I, I did some consults on some porn stars. So th that's a, that's a hose. There's a little side hose. Not all the time. No, I know that that's oh. I know that that is used a lot, but well, you know, the hose, the it hose. is, it is. But See? there are guys who are genetically See? whatever. The they, hose. They got one right there, but uh, no, you can tell because if. Sometimes you pay close attention, you can see here's the urethra, and uh, the, the semen's coming out of a point like an inch below it. You go, ah, that's like when you see the wires in a, you know. It's awesome, in a, Ron. In a, oh, the fake, that's like fake weights, fake weights. Exactly. But uh, okay, so HCG guys, that's what you want to nope. get a hold of. But yeah. interesting, I used to do interviews with porn stars. Uh, I went through probably about a year and a half period where I did four, four oh. top interviews, and I asked the women. So I did uh, Jenna Jameson, someone named Cheyenne. Oh Ron. Yeah, Sh uh, Cheyenne. Anyway, I asked each of them. I said, "Does that, you know, does that impress you? The the volume of semen that comes spraying out?" And they go, Pfft. "That's the guys are the only ones who give a shit about that. I could care less." So, but guys, if that's, what that's you awesome, <laughs> this is a man show, so we got to cover man yes, stuff. It is. Okay, well, that's all the stuff I had to talk about for Clomid this week, Doctor. It was a nice perspective because. I've used it. I never really knew what the hell was going on, what, what it was doing. I just was told to use it, so I did. You know, this was way back, way back when. You know, late 20s, early 30s when I was using Clomid. So good good to get some actual data, some some medical expertise on it. Because it's still, it's still widely used. I still hear guys using it between cycles. Incredible. So uh, you are in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, the, the practice is booming down there. Glad to see that. And uh, everybody, once again, I want to remind you, if you want to get a hold of the doctor, easiest way is go to metabolicdoc.com website, and there's a contact uh, button there somewhere, I'm sure. You can get a hold of him. He does Skype consults. You could be anywhere in the world, uh, or if you're lucky enough to be able to get to Hartford, Connecticut, or Fort Lauderdale, Florida, you might be able to get an actual, actual uh, appointment with the doctor. But in the meantime, his wisdom is available to you on YouTube every week on the Anabolic Doc channel. And of course, an excellent primer on his perspective of the medical perspective of steroid use is in this book, America on Steroids. I had to look again. I get confused sometimes with your book and Tuliados' book. But, uh, <laughs> Dr. T. <laughs> but let me make an announcement. Yeah. Change, we're, we're adding to the website, Metabolic Doc and Anabolic Doc will live forever. Yeah. And those domains are live. You'll, you, could always, you could always type in in the world, Anabolic Doc. It's always going to go to my site. We, we added, we have a new domain, testosteronology.com. So is it testosterone and then ology? How do you yeah, say? it's testosterone. 
Here's how you do it. Okay. I know it's a little tricky. Yes. Testosterone, drop the E and add O L O G Y. Testosteronology. I owned testosteronology. Ron, everything is shifting over as I as I add and grow the practice with new physicians. Yeah. Because whenever I'm in the world, people always ask me, Ron, unless the guys that know me, my fans, my supporters, the anabolic, who doesn't know what the anabolic doc does? Yeah. Okay. But then then we changed it to the metabolic doc because you couldn't go see the anabolic doc, so come to I, see. I could, I, I could, I wouldn't care. You could definitely, you can definitely. <laughs> so, so, but when I'm in the woods on my mountain bike with the poodles, and a guy pulls me over and he goes, "Doc, what? You're the metabolic doc. What is the metabolic doc? I follow you." Yeah. A guy said about a year ago, "Who is the? What is the met? What is the metabolic doc? What is it?" And I'm trying to explain to him, and he just got in his bike and took off with my poodle. <laughs> he took so, your poodle. Oh no. So I said, I said. I'm, what am I? I drove back with my other poodle. Get the other poodle. Get the poodle. Hey, Victor, get Scotty. Yeah. So I came back and I said, what really am I? I'm a testosteronologist. Testosteronologist. Wow. So because I take care of men on testosterone. I'm, I'm an internist who takes care of men on testosterone. It's very complicated. It's not just endocrinology or urology. It's testosteronology. I'm going to look for that next year in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary to see if they've added that. It's going to be added. And we're adding doctors as we speak. I'm working now. I'm working on finally adding franchise doctors. So any doctors out there that feel that you're you got to be a real doctor, you got to be board certified, internal medicine or family medicine. I w I cannot use nurse practitioners or or p physicians assistants. I just I just don't agree with that. These are going to be great doctors. I like them to be academic. Any doctor. Feel free to contact my office because we are adding testosterone, and I will train you. You will come under my wing. You will al already be a good doctor. That's part. That's 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 a prerequisite. Yeah. And then I will teach you my secret learnings that I've learned since 2003. Wow. And and we're gonna go forward, and we're gonna add under my tutelage, testosteronologists, Ron, all over America and then abroad. Wow. This is crazy, Doc. <laughs> Yep. Yep. <laughs> wow. Well, very exciting, and keep us updated as always, because this is an unfolding saga. So uh, that is all this week, guys, for Ask the Anabolic Doc. Appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate you, Dr. O'Connor, taking the time and showing the, is that the right arm of doom? The right arm of doom, just like Hellboy has. Oh, there's a left one. And uh, keep the questions coming. You can submit them on the comments section here, or go to musculardevelopment.com. No bull forums. I have a thread. Questions for the anabolic doc. Either way, we'll get them, and uh, we want to. I want more questions ahead. from the guys. Come yeah, on, guys. We want more. I don't want to keep stealing his videos. As easy and fun as it is. So we're very busy. We're very busy. It's okay. Yeah. So that's it. We will see you guys next time.